And what Validate Matches does is it graphically shows you uh, records where the um, about the deduping rule we specified in the transformation uh, occur. So let's look at the first one. We have four records grouped together and what it's providing me with is that first column which is the record ID and it says record ID number 18 matched to 25, 5, and 94 on the criteria we set. So in our case the criteria we set was first name, last name, address, home phone, and cell phone. You'll note on record number five, the email address is different. And it, the DQ Guru will highlight the differences. But this one was offered up as a match because we said everything else that we wanted to match on did match. So in this case, I can look at this data and I can manually clean it up. So I could say, hmm, you know what? Even though the email address is different for record number five, I know this is the same guy. So I'm going to say, Record number 18 is master of all these. And what that means is record 18 will replace record 5, record 25, and record 94. I could say, you know what, actually that email address is different, so I don't want to match. I could unmatch it. And what that says is I've manually said this is not a match. Um, 18 and 5 are not matches, and what you'll see in here is this. what this dotted line does, uh, this very thin dotted line says, I decided that 5 and 18 aren't duplicate records. Do not dedupe them. However, 94 and 25 are duplicates of 18, so when we run the, uh, the, uh, the cleansing, it will, it will clean those up. Now, you know, I actually do want this one to be... Uh, a duplicate, so I'm just going to mark it as a duplicate. And uh, I can go through and examine my data, and you'll know, boy, you know, with, with those guidelines, most of this is pretty much correct. So I have a couple of choices. I can manually go in, and for each one of these duplicates that are offered up, match them up manually. My other alternative, and, and you really have to be confident in what you're doing, is I can do what's called an auto match. And when I run an auto match, it will go and match all these records according to that rule set. So I want to be damn sure that the fields that I'm matching against are the ones that really matter. And then oftentimes, uh, you know, in some organizations, if you have something unique that you know is well and truly unique for, for an entity, for example, social security number or social insurance number, you could probably match them that, the first and the last name, and be pretty damn confident that you've got the right one. Uh, the only challenge you've got in that case is it will typically auto-match off the lower ID number. So if the later one actually has the right address, you could have some issues. So really, the auto-match is there if you're really comfortable with it. Ideally, though, you look at, um, uh, at manually matching on a number of different criteria. One of the things uh, uh, with master data management is, you know, typically you're not going to uh, have a really clean matching utility. You are going to have to do some manual cleaning at least the first pass through. Um, once you've cleaned up your, for example, master customer data and you start to get updates and new data, you can then uh, more readily run a process like this because typically your later data is going to create you know, if I have two uh, uh, John Kemp's, uh, if I get a, a newly updated John Kemp from one of my systems, that's probably, if everything else is the same, and let's say the address is different, that's probably reflecting the true case that my address has changed. So I'm lazy. I'm going to auto-match this. And you'll note when I click auto-match, it goes through and matches every single entry that we had. And if I look at my uh, uh, validation status, um, it has gone and uh, determined that I have an auto match with 20 records. So if I run my merge engine now, and again, I need to specify a log. And believe me, one of the, one of the you know, guiding things with master data management is you always want to be able to unwind things. You, know, you want to keep versioning on your data. So having a log file, having the ability to, to keep a, a match pool of what you did will allow you to uh, follow that tenant so that 
you know, let's say we do get something where we do it wrong, we can roll things back. So I'm just going to create a log file here and we're going to run the command. Now you'll note zero will process all and uh, uh, we can have varying levels of uh, information about what works uh, about the, the error messages we want to see. Another thing I want to point out to you here is this show command. What this show command does is it allows you, if you take this command line here, gives you the information to be able to run this in batch. So if you've got everything working, you're happy with it, and you want to be able to just run this nightly in batch, you can insert this into your batch process. Or if you're doing it as part of an ETL process, you can insert it in there as a step in your ETL. A uh, bunch of different ways you can go with that. But that will allow you to do that. Now before we run this, I just want to go back to my data. And you'll note this is, uh, this is the table we're deduping. In this table, I've got 100 records. And uh, what we'll do is we'll run the dedupe, and I believe we're going to see 20 records uh, getting eliminated because of the matches. So let's run this engine. And we'll, we always give this warning message because you know what? You are changing your data. When you run the merge engine, that source table is going to be changed. The other nice thing when you run this merge engine at this point in time is it, if you've done a... Uh, a uh, uh, you know if you if you've got merge rules in there, it will clean those up as well. So you know in this case, it uh, had twenty records that were duplicates. It's merged those twenty records, and it does one each each one of these individual. And the reason it does that is it always runs the assumption that hey, you've got a relational table here. And there may be related tables that I need, re related records I need to clean up. And it would give you, if you had more than one table, it would give you the, um, the notification on there. So in this case, my dedupe demo, I had 20 that I got rid of and I updated 20. So if I now go back to my uh, Wabbit, where I had this source one, and you'll note here, we had 100 records. If I then rerun my select star, my select doll, I'll have gotten it down to... Uh, 80 records. It got rid of 20 duplicates. Now you'll note in there, for example, uh, these three rows here, uh, 69 through 71, look pretty similar. The reason they didn't match up is because I said match up on first name, last name, home phone, cell phone, and address. And in this case, we've got differences on the cell phones and the address. We may want to do multiple passes at our data, so let's knock off the really easy stuff, get that out of the way where it's clearly a duplicate, and then you know provide a secondary uh, deduping uh, uh, project where I would go back and say, okay, I want to just look at first and last name, and I'll manually decide whether I'm gonna I'm going to uh, merge those. In this case, you know I'm pretty confident that uh, these two records are duplicates because everything's the same except for that cell phone number. Um, but again, that really is driven by your master data management plans and your data quality plans. And that is uh, DQ Guru uh, and its deduping uh, capabilities, the very simple and high level. Uh, there's a heck of a lot of uh, capability in here as far as determining how to match up records and, and ways of, of, of getting apples to apples in terms of the input data.